Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that we're going to do tonight is we're going to stack on our live that we did a couple of hours ago around the forced reset trigger decision that just came out of Texas. Now, this is a massive deal. It directly goes after the ATF's tactics over the last two years, hits the DOJ, and grants a temporary restraining order or a TRO. Everything is being linked right now. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think. And this is one to send out because this is the actual decision and a lot of the other communications I've tied together for you guys in your review. So please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. I would love to have you join us as we distribute freedom twice daily, and thank you for that consideration. All right, my brothers and sisters, without much more ado, let's dive into this. Now, this is about the forced reset triggers. On my live earlier, I, someone asked me what an FRT was, and for some reason I said full reset trigger. It's forced reset trigger. That's just a slip of the tongue, my bad. But let me show you what NAGR did, National Association for Gun Rights, because that's who actually brought this lawsuit. This is from their press release, and it'll show you kind of the next steps of where this is going, because something is happening, and it's exciting. So National Association for Gun Rights granted temporary restraining order and lawsuit against the ATF. I'm going to hit this first, then show you the lawsuit. August 30th, 2023, Washington, D.C. Today, the National Association for Gun Rights was granted a temporary restraining order in the lawsuit against the ATF. National Association for Gun Rights v. Garland in federal court in Northern District of Texas. NAGR, or National Association for Gun Rights, argued that the Fifth Circuit's Cargill ruling, holding that bump stocks are not machine guns, should apply here, and Judge O'Connor agreed. The Fifth Circuit's recent analysis of the exact statutory language at issue here shows the plaintiffs are likely to succeed on the merits. That's big because that's the NAGR against the DOJ and the ATF. Because FRTs do not enable a weapon to automatically fire multiple rounds with a single function of the trigger itself, the court finds that the FRTs are most likely not machine guns under Cargill's reasoning. Now, the reason that I read that for you is they put a really good case together. Honestly, they really did. I'm not affiliated with any group in a direct way like this, so I can be objective. They put a very good decision or a very good uh, case together. I'm about to show you a few more things, but they tied the Fifth Circuit's court decision on bump stock bans as well. They even quote the court has spoken and found that the ATF's definition is likely unlawful because it is, said Dudley Brown, president of National Association for Gun Rights. This temporary restraining order is another step in our fight to keep the ATF's bogus redefining of machine gun thrown out in any is us closer to stopping the ATF harassment of our rare of our friends at rare breed triggers. The goal of the Texas lawsuit is to bring an end to the ATF's FRT trigger ban and to protect NAGR's members and supporters who own FRTs from an all out of control ATF. That's the big thing. Are you guys catching a theme here with the pistol brace and the ghost guns and the frames and receivers? All the groups across the nation that are Second Amendment rights groups that are bringing lawsuits are getting injunctions for their members. You guys seeing the ecosystem that the left is developing for us? Yeah. Well, throw this one on the pile. Let's continue. Under federal law, a machine gun is defined as a weapon which shoots, is designed to shoot, or can re readily restore to shoot automatically more than one shot without manual re reloading by a single function of the trigger. That, this is the definition that has stood unaltered in the law for nearly nine decades that the ATF is now ignoring and trying to rewrite through civil charges against our friends at rear breed triggers. There is no dispute that the rare breed triggers, FRT, only allows one round to be fired in each function of the trigger. This part right here, this is the key part. Chances are very good, based on what the court said in today's temporary restraining order, that we can get this extended to a full preliminary injunction protecting all our members, and that's what we're fight for next, saying Hannah Hill, Executive Director of the National Foundation of Gun Rights, legal arm of the National Association for Gun Rights. Okay, so they're going after the temporary restraining order for everyone who owns this inside their group, just like the pistol brace ban with other groups. You see what's happening. The left is building our army. It's hilarious. And they're funding all the lawsuits against them further by these things. It doesn't get any sweeter. But now, let's dive into the actual decision because there's a few things here that I really want to share with you guys. So, here's the actual case itself. National Association for Gun Rights, the plaintiffs, and Merrick Garland is the defendant. So, that's the DOJ. Okay? This is the uh, plaintiff's motion for temporary restraining orders. Here's the definition of the, the actual force reset trigger, if you guys were wondering at all. The, a force reset trigger, or FRT, is a semi-automatic assembly that allows the trigger to reset quick, well, more quickly than it otherwise would using a traditional trigger return spring. This assembly enables the user to fire the firearm quickly, well, excuse me, more quickly than a traditional trigger. 
That's the whole point. They are making law whole cloth through interpretation of an executive bureaucracy. We've seen this with the pistol brace rule. We've seen this with the frames and receivers rule. We've seen this with the CDC. We've seen it with the EPA. They're doing this across the board with executive bureaucracies with impunity. That's what they're doing, and that's what's getting hit over and over and over again. Do you think it's a coincidence that the SCOTUS just took up a case that's going to hit Chevron deference, which relies on the executive's interpretation of existing law? All of this is tying together. What we've been saying for two years together, you and I, on this channel, is it's coming to a head, and it's probably not going to work out too well for the executive bureaucracies who are out of control. Now, let me show you what the judge said about their standing. And then I'm going to this is how the judge starts tearing them apart. Defendants first argue that the individual plaintiff, so this is DOJ is the defendant, individual plaintiff, NOGR, they lack standing because there is no credible threat of prosecution. Additionally, the defendants contend that they have no current plans to prosecute the individual plaintiffs, but this phrasing reveals the implicit threat that the individual plaintiffs fear. The defendant could change their current plans at any time by deciding to prosecute. That is why, as the Fifth Circuit makes clear, standing exists here. You aren't going to charge anyone right now, but you could later on. That's the whole point. It's a tool. It's an arrow in the quiver. It's a tool in the tool belt. They are going to use it whenever they want at their discretion. That's the entire point, and that's what the court is taking issue with. This is gold. Let's continue. This is where they tear it asunder some more, and then I'll show you the conclusion. The Administrative Procedure Act, or the APA, instructs courts to hold unlawful and set aside agency action found to be in excess of statutory ju jurisdiction, authority, or limitations. Plaintiffs contend that the ATS regulation broadening the machine gun definition is an arbitrary and capricious expansion of the agency's authority, and plaintiffs are likely correct. That's massive. Now, let me show you the conclusion, because this is a very good, very good thing. For the foregoing reasons, the court grants plaintiff's motion for temporary restraining order to preserve the status quo until September 27th, 2023, or until such time the court rules on plaintiff's motion for preliminary injunction. The court orders the defendants, again, DOJ, uh, along with their officers, agents, servants, and employees are enjoined from implementing or enforcing against plaintiffs Carey, Spiegel, and Wheeler in any manner. The ATF's expanded definition of machine gun that this court has determined is likely unlawful. Further, the court weighs the security requirement. That part doesn't matter. It's so ordered this 30th day of August 2023 by Reed O'Connor, who is turning out to be a rock star for the gun rights. And that's what we're talking about right here. This was extremely well done. This is something that is pretty lock solid. And the ATF just took a big loss, which can be the card that pulls the entire house down. And that's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.